go to learn a joke, here are some tips to do it well. The base thing is really to practice, but here are some tips to help starting with tips. So gel loading tips are super duper helpful. They're long and skinny as opposed to short and fat. Um, this is going to let you go into the very bottom of the well, which is really important, especially if you're running like a continuous gel, something without a stacking gel. The stacking gel, the purpose of the stacking gel is it kind of gets everything um, to the start at the same time. So you imagine when you're pipetting in, especially if you have a large volume, you're gonna have like a column of sample and what's on the top is gonna have like, the, what's in the beginning is going to have a head start to what's on the top. The stacking gel, it has bigger holes and so everything gets concentrated down um, through the, in that stacking gel so they all get to the actual like resolving gel at the same time. This is gonna help you, even if your sample was kind of like up in the wells, if you didn't load too well, it's all going to start at the same time. What happens in one of these other gels is that where you load things, that's going to start. So if you're loading and you have like a big smeary column, then you're going to have a big smeary band in your gel instead of a nice fine crisp line. So what you want to do is get into the very bottom of the well and then pipe head slowly. Um, so I was running one of these urea page gels, which is um, you can use to separate like small bits of RNA and DNA. Um, the urea helps like erase the size, just like with the SDS page, you have the SDS erase the size. Pretty cool. Um, I'll do more on that in the future. Um, but anyway, the, it's really important there because you don't have this continuous stuff. But here are some tips um, that'll help you no matter what type of page you're running. The first is to like find the well. So this can be kind of hard. Um, what you want, might want to need to do is actually just like pipe head up and down some liquid. Um, once you find the first well and you pipe head something in there, and it's easier to find the rest of them because they are evenly spaced these wells. Um, some of the precast ones have the wells like drawn on there or written on there. You can also um, put a marker on there, but make sure like write on it, but make sure that you're not gonna then wash it off when uh, when you're doing it. So make sure it's like a marker that's like a lab marker. You can also sometimes like stick a sheet of paper or something behind it um, to help kind of be able to see the outlines. And so when you're pipetting up, so you, if you, depends if you, what your strategy is. Are you just trying to get, are you trying to pipette like all your sampling? Like maybe if you're doing a purification where you're actually going to extract things out of your gel, then it's really important that you get all your sample. Whereas if you are just wanting to visualize it, then you just need to say like a set amount and maybe it's really important that you have the same amount set amount for each of them and then you want to make sure that you make extra sample so typically make like one and a half samples worth or if you're worried that you might have to run it again make like two and a half that's the good thing so you have that so if you are just doing a set amount um this is less of an issue but if you're doing something where you're trying to suck it all up you want to make sure that when your pipette is set is set to like whatever a larger volume then you actually get a load but when you go, you don't want to introduce a bunch of air bubbles. So instead of doing like that, now what's going to happen is when you go to pipette it in, you're going to get an air bubble and then your sample is going to hit the air bubble and your sample is going to like be all smeared and squishy and blind or it's going to like pop up out of the well because the bubble is going to burst um, and then it's going to pop out of the well and then get into all the other wells. Not good. So what we're going to do is pipette it up till it's just the tip and now you can load it like this. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not pressing down before you get into the gel well. Um, then when you get into the gel well, you want to go all the way to the bottom and slowly release. Um, you can kind of like go back and forth along the gel line, slowly going up. Um, and then when you go to the bottom, like I, what I like to do is just kind of like go to that second stop, that like that hard point. And then, but don't push all the way because then you're going to get a bubble. Instead, just kind of keep your finger pressed down so you don't, you don't want to pull up because then you're going to pull your sample back up into the pipette and then it's going to get all diluted and you're going to have all these problems if you try to pipette it back in. So instead, you just want to hold your pressure there and pull gently out. So when you're doing this too, you want to make sure that if you have like a large volume or whatever, you're not just like sticking your pipette super deep in there because then you're going to get sample on the outside of the pipette. What's going to happen is you go to pipette it in, it's going to get, the buffer is going to, the, like the buffer in the gel is going to get, take that stuff that was on the outside of the tube and now it's going to be in all of your legs, which you don't want. So you want to make sure that your tip is just in the very surface when you're pulling it up, but make sure it's deep enough that you're not getting bubbles because as we talked about, the bubbles are going to cause problems. 
Also, I forgot to mention, um, so it can help to keep your elbow on the table to make keep yourself steady. Um, and you can use like one hand to steady your other arm um, when you're pipetting um, to keep that cool, steady um, flow. That's the basics of pipetting samples into the wells. Um, and um, there's, so what's more important than that is, as I said, with these continuous gels. A couple other things about like, if you're running a urea gel, page gel, especially because the urea in the gel, what's gonna be denaturing it on um, unfolding the things. Um, it can kind of like leak out of the gel. Kind of. Well, what happens is that if you, you can see that if you run the gel, it'll be like this, layer of this like kind of more viscous stuff at the bottom of the wells and like the urea is kind of like leaching out of the gels. You want to remove all of that before you actually run your gel because it's going to get in the way of the sample loading properly. Um, and so what you can do is you can take a syringe or you can take a pipette tip and actually go up and down in each of the wells. Unfortunately what happens is sometimes you get like, especially if you're using a homemade gel, you can get like pieces of the gel just kind of like fly up out of the one well and into the next neighboring well. So what's really important what you can do is you can actually do that to each well, um, like right before you load it. But you want to make sure you're not then like messing up the other wells so that you can like pull it out with it more carefully than if you were just doing your up down, up down, up down with your syringe. Um, because you don't want to be, basically once something's in there, you don't want to be spreading out of the cells. Um, and also you want to make sure that you're working quickly because the gel, it, the bands are going to start to like diffuse and they can diffuse out of the well. Um, and even if they don't if you go all the way out of the well, you're still getting it rising up of the column as opposed to being a nice crisp band. So working quickly is important. In addition to the tracking die, the sample loading buffer also has a like something heavy. So something like some sugar, like a FICOL or glycerol or something often um, to give it like a little weight so it's not just floating right up out of the wells. Um, some buffers, sample buffers also have other things um, like, well, like the SDS or Formamide for like an RNA gel. Um, but sometimes the weighty part is more heavy than others. Um, and so for the RNA gel loading die type, they tend to be less more floaty, less weighted, um, whereas the ones that really have like glycerol and stuff tend to sink better. Um, to also to avoid getting them out of the walls, you want to make sure you're not overflowing the wells. So the less volume you can add, the crisper your bands will potentially be with these continuous gels. So it's less important with like an SDS page gel, but when you're running one of these urea page gels, it's and like it's like a TBE page gel or whatever. It's important that you have something in all the lanes, preferably the same amount. Um, and so if you don't have enough samples, then you can add in those em empty lanes, you put the running buffer, uh, so like the sample loading die. So typically that die is like 2x or something, so you could just take some of your tris buffer or whatever, make a 1x and then load the same amount of that as you loading the amount of your samples. This will help keep the current and everything constant throughout um, and constant across the line because you already have enough problems with things like your gel smiling, um, it can happen due to uneven heating. Um, so things like pre-running the gel can help with that too um, and not running it too hot. Um, but basically, you want to make sure that you have the sample sample in all the lanes, even if you don't actually use those lanes um, with like your real sample. So what you want to do is, especially because of that smiling effect where the things in the center are going to run lower typically, like the things on the edge, this makes it really inconvenient, especially if you have like all the lanes filled and then your ladders are on the end and then you don't know which, like where the ladder corresponds to your sample. Um, so if possible, it's always good to put the put a ladder in the middle too if you have enough lanes. And if you have enough lanes where you have extra, put your samples in the middle um, and then put your blanks on the edges instead of putting like your blanks, instead of doing like samples starting at one, one, two, three, four, five or whatever, and then just have a bunch of blanks because now your sample's gonna be all weird. 
Um, so yeah, typically I put like a ladder on either side, um, a ladder in the middle if you can, and then when I don't have enough samples, I put this, or don't have like enough samples to fill all the wells, I put the samples in the center uh, because of that smiling effect. But I typically start putting the samples um, in, so I count how many lanes ahead, so ahead of time I calculate out like, okay, how many lanes do I need to get to this point or whatever. Um, which lane do I need to start on with my actual samples or with my ladder? Um, and then I put those first and I go back at the end and I put in the blanks because this way if you mess up loading one of the wells, now you still have those empty lanes that you can use. Whereas if you put the buffer in them beforehand, now you're out of luck uh, because you already have a sample in there. Um, so that's just something that you might learn the hard way, and so I'm hoping that this will help somebody not learn the hard way on that. If you're running an SDS page gel and your sample has potassium in it, um, so potassium is going to precipitate with the vessel sulfate, so sodium the vessel sulfate, the SDS is soluble, the potassium the vessel sulfate, KDS is not, and so then it'll precipitate out, so you want to heat that up right before you actually run your sample. Also, be sure that your sample is not like too concentrated or you're not loading too much of it. Um, so this can be a problem if you are doing, say, like a cell lysate. You want to see like, oh, is it in the pellet? Is it in this fraction or whatever? Make sure you dilute that down first. Um, you might need to do like a range of dilutions to see what's a good concentration. Um, or you can do like a Bradford or some sort of um, protein concentration thing to make sure that you're loading like a normalish amount. Um, if you load too much, what's going to happen is you're going to like, everything's going to contract and it's going to go and you're going to get this weird smear down your gel and then everything around it is going to like, yeah, so that's not good. Or load your sample, I mean, and you might see like some like precipitation form, um, but it'll be less bad if you do the um, heat it up like first. Um, So just basically make sure that you don't have any bubbles when you're pipe cutting up, that you keep your finger pressure down um, when you go all the way in, but you're not pushing out, just nice and firm. Um, then you want to push down, pull up, keep your thumb there, pull out, and pull up.